Hi, welcome to the first episode of this A-level economics course. If our mission, to help you learn, is accomplished during this video, we would kindly ask you to consider liking it and subscribing to our channel. It would help us a lot. Let's start by talking about two very important kinds of goods, economic and free goods. A free good, like air or water, is characterized by abundance. Free goods cannot be traded, because nobody living by the beach would buy sand. There would be no point. An economic good is a good or service that has a certain utility to society, and people are willing to pay for it. These goods have a degree of scarcity, and therefore an opportunity cost. What's that, you ask? Time for a little story. Let's say your friend invited you to a movie, but on that same night, you were planning to stay home and watch an episode of your favorite TV show, alone. You now have to make a choice. You either stay home and watch your TV show, or go out and you watch a movie with your friend. They both sound pretty good, I must admit, but both have a cost. Because I know you are a socially active individual, let's say you choose option B. You get to watch the movie with your friend, but the cost of it is not watching your TV show at home that night. That, dear friends, is an opportunity cost. If you choose option A, your opportunity cost would be not to see the movie with your friend. There is a famous economics quote that goes like this. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And this is exactly what it means. Every action has an opportunity cost, which means that a free lunch isn't actually free. Get it? We'll talk more about this in a later video. To sum up, an economic good has an opportunity cost, and a free good doesn't. Everyone has certain basic needs in life. Food, a place to live. Everyone also has an infinite list of things they want. The new PS5, please mom. The new iPhone, holidays or houses. However, there is a limited amount of resources available to satisfy these needs and wants, because resources are scarce. These facts lead to the basic economic problem. How can the available scarce resources be used to satisfy people's infinite needs and wants as effectively as possible? Scarcity is the reason why economics exists as a science. We wouldn't have to worry about how scarce resources are allocated if those resources were unlimited. The main economic problem is the fact that there is a limited amount of resources to satisfy unlimited wants. This means that we have to make choices. It is also important to understand the difference between a need and a want. A need is something you must have in order to survive or to do something. Like the PS5 for me. A want is something you desire, but it is not essential. By the way, I was just kidding, a PS5 is not a need. Unless you're my mom. There are two types of statements in economic analysis positive statements and normative statements. Positive statements describe facts or how something actually is. A normative statement describe opinions or how things should be. Economic analysis has a slight tendency to focus mostly on positive analysis, and it can be tempting to analyze things using normative analysis. However, you shouldn't think that one type is more important than the other. Both are really important. Let us now talk about economic agents. What is this? It has nothing to do with secret agents or anything like that. They are simply the people or groups of people who fall into the same category, simply because they perform, by their own decision, the same function in economic activity. These agents can usually be thought of as producers, firms or people that make goods or provide services, consumers or households, people or firms who buy the goods and services, and the government that sets the rules that other participants in the economy have to follow, while also producing and consuming goods and services. Each of these economic agents has to make decisions that affect how resources are allocated. For example, producers decide what to make and how much they're willing to sell it for. Consumers have to decide what they want to buy and how much they're willing to pay for it. Governments have to decide how much to intervene in the way producers and consumers act. The scarce resources, 
inputs, used to make the things people want and need, outputs, can be divided into four factors of production. These factors are land, labor, capital and enterprise. Land includes all the earth's natural resources. Non-renewable resources, such as natural gas, oil and coal, and your will to study, am I right? Renewable resources, like wind, materials extracted by mining, water, and animals found in a certain area. Labor is the work done by those people who contribute to the production process. The part of the population that is available to work is called the labor force. There is usually also a number of people who are capable of working and who are old enough to work, but don't have a job. Economists refer to these people as unemployed. There are also people who aren't in paid employment, but still provide things people need or want, such as homemakers. Different people can have different levels of education, experience or training. These factors can make some people more valuable or productive in the workspace than others. We say that they have a greater amount of human capital. Capital is the equipment, factories and schools that help to produce goods or services. Capital is different from land because capital has to be made first. Much of an economy's capital is paid for by the government, such as a road network. And finally, enterprise refers to the people, entrepreneurs, who take risks and create things from the other three factors of production. They set up and run businesses using any of the factors of production available to them. If the business fails, they can lose a lot of money. But if the business succeeds, the reward for their risk-taking is profit. I'm sure you know about Sir Richard Branson, one of the richest entrepreneurs in the world. He's responsible for the Virgin brand, that englobes Virgin Trains, Virgin Money and much, much more. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. In this course, we will cover the main concepts taught in A-level economics, to help you succeed in school and in life as well. As always, half of our videos will be available on YouTube, and to get access to our full courses, and to be able to see them without ads, you can check out our Patreon page. By becoming a patron, you will help this project stay alive while you learn, and by paying less per month, than you would spend in a week in Starbucks coffee. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one!